Hello, I'm out Dorylysium, and welcome to Roar 4X, the in-depth space strategy game that is frustratingly complex at times and amazingly intricate at others. Uh, we are building up Sol. We're beginning to start our off-world stuff. However, we do have a few issues in that uh, if we have a quick look at Earth, you'll notice that we have a worker shortage of almost 30 million people. That's... That's a lot of people that we need, and we don't have them. That's a bit of an issue. Uh, we have started to seed other worlds, but we had to stop because of, again, the people issue. Now, if we have a quick check on commanders, I do want to check if we have a better option here. Uh, so let's go over to us for administrators. Earth is, yes, it is taken, as we understand. But who is currently uh, running Earth? It is, you're the Academy, Samantha Void Singer, population 20%, wealth 25, production 5, terraforming 5. Okay, let us check if we've got a more recent person who could do this job. Uh, we're going to say population is going to be our main focus. No, no we don't. Sadly, it's still Samantha Void Singer. Um, kind of hoping that we'd have someone else, but doesn't seem... Uh, Change easily and distant will make you a story character. Why not? Right. There's no point in us building new stuff on Earth that takes people if we don't have the people to work it. So I think we need to just adjust our plans. We did have this whole concept of getting these construction factories done. And while that might be cool, uh, we can't use them because we don't have people to use them. So we're actually going to just ramp down this percentage all the way from 50 to 20. Uh, that gives us 30 percent that we can now use. I'm going to say, let's start working on hmm. you know what? Let's get like two more military academies so that we can pump out more people. And that way we'll have better options for uh, assigning people to places. Let's also get ourselves Get naval headquarters, uh, could get ordnance factories. You know what? Ordnance factories might be tempting, but again, they need people. Terraforming installations, again, they need people. This is a bit of a problem for us. Uh, infrastructure. You know what? We can up the amount to work on infrastructure. There we go. Quadruple how much we're focusing on that. And then we've got 5% left. This 5% can be then spent on the ground. Of course, construction complex. Done. Um, that's not going to solve the massive issue of not having people, but it hopefully will solve the issue of constantly making more jobs that no one can fulfill. Right. Carry on. Okay, so the stake has gone back to strategist. This is our mine layer. And of course, we're going to tell it to just drop another bunch of mines because we're dreadfully afraid of whatever will happen there. And then cease fire. And then I'd like you to come back to Earth. Okay, so good news. It looks like we have our trans-Newtonian cargo shuttles now. I thought initially, hey, this means we need to replace the actual shuttle bay on all of our ships. It doesn't. I think this means that they just upgrade in place. Like, I guess someone like changes the configuration or downloads new firmware or something. In theory, I guess it's just we replace the shuttles. But, like, we don't actually need to replace the component, I believe. Let's have a quick look. Uh, let's bring up, say, our freighter. Yeah, the load time is now eight hours. The cargo shuttle multiplier has gone from eight uh, from four to eight, so it's doubled. So, yes, the trans-Newtonian cargo shuttles have helped a lot. Um, in fact, so much so that we could probably just reduce the weight of our ships by putting less shuttles on them. Uh, we will need to assign some new research for that. Um... It was logistics, right? Okay, we've got a few options here. Uh, firstly, ultra-large fuel storage. Great if we want to make some, like, big mining ships. Well, not mining ships, but, like, uh, refining ships that are going to go scoop up fuel, etc. Kind of necessary. Um, also optional is the refueling hub, which, again, we're going to need if we're going to make anything huge refueling-wise. Um, their new refueling system, similarly... Ship to ship tractor beam. That's going to be useful for tugs. And I think that's going to be incredibly important for us because do you recall Lewis? 
the system that we've basically quarantined because, dear God, something is having a field day over there. Well, potentially, at some point in the future, we might want to go and grab some of these wrecks to then analyze them. There might be useful technology in them. Whoever this is, is capable of fielding quite a large fleet, and that means they probably have better technology than us. Uh, of course, that does mean we need a way to get in there. We probably need to jump drive, etc. Everything here is a stabilized jump point except for our one, which is worrying. i got to say that is actually a little bit worrying. Hopefully, it just means they don't know about us. So I want to keep it that way. Um, what we'll probably do is we'll probably focus at least initially on the ship ship tractor beam because we can also use that to pull around some uh, orbital habitats, refining station, terraforming stations, etc. And we want Tetsuo Duncan. And the terraforming module is going to be done in 59. Okay. Uh, we've also got our continual expansion for the Lind Electric Boat Company. Up to 7,000 now. That's lovely. We're going to add a slipway. We're going to try and get that to three slipways. This is probably where we're going to build our new exploration vessels. Uh, the Dracos is going to be much more focused on military vessels now because it, it comes with five slipways which means we can start rolling out more vessels quickly right all right the stake is ready to go and this time we will drop some mines uh at the entrance to the mr gray jump point so we'll head over there that's actually going to be a very quick voyage open fire ceasefire back to Earth. Whoa, 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 whoa. To Jazza, there are aliens. Uh, a new type of alien. This is not the fossilites, the hostile entities that have repeatedly blown up our exploration ships. These are new aliens, completely new. Okay. What do we, what do we know about them? Huh. Love it. Um, okay, we're attempting to communicate. Let's let's go with this. Hopefully they won't open fire on us. Um, we're gonna just skip forward like five seconds. Interesting. Whatever this is, it's got an incredibly small thermal signature. We're talking like nine. And it's not moving. So I don't know what this actually is. Oh, hello. Okay. So they did start moving. They just changed their uh, their thermal signature from 9 to 725. So they were stationary. My guess is that maybe they were surveying or something. But they were capable of then shifting up to 4,000 kilometers per second, which is far more than any of our vessels. Yeah. That's at least a tier probably of drive above us, if not two. So... Hi, new alien race. Uh, we've lost contact with them. Whoa! Whoa! We have just found a whole fleet of them. Hi. Okay. Uh, one thing we should probably do, by the way, is go to the fossilites and we'll start considering them as hostile on site because they do keep firing us on site. Uh, the Jazz are aliens. I'm hoping that that won't be the case. They just seem to be hanging out next to us. They haven't tried to communicate. They haven't received anything that we can't understand or whatever. We're just chilling here. Okay. Okay, we've just found the new system of distant Roman. This has six planets, 25 moons, nine asteroids. A few that potentially would maybe harbor life. Uh, the temperature is a bit low. The pressure is either a little, little low but acceptable, or a little high but acceptable. Um, oxygen concentrations are a bit too low for us. But they do have ice sheets. Okay. These worlds are quite interesting. Very well. Let's update the map. Distant Roman is over here. One, two, three jumps away. Uh, Ice Lord actually connects to two different systems. 
Zanma and Subject Delta. I'm going to need to reposition a lot of stuff on the map because uh, this is probably not conducive to understanding where things are. Also, Slaying Hurdle might end up like having something come off there and cross the... Don't cross the paths. It'll look weird and... Look, aesthetically, this is going to be a mess. Uh, but Strategist does have a jump point left, and I want to explore that and Slaying Hurdle and probably just a Roman before we actually move the map around. Um, at which point, I'm going to make that look more aesthetic. Okay, Jazza again. Interesting. Pretty far away from us. Now, at some stage, we are actually going to want to get jump point stabilization module because that allows us to then send a lot of our freighters and stuff through stabilized jump points. However, for now, that's 5,000 and we're busy working on a few other things. I don't think we can really get it, although I would love to try and grab that one. It's, it's just not feasible right now. We're going to have to wait on that one. Okay, we found a new system, the Davit system, which is a binary with a total of 11 planets and 14 moons. The first planet has one... Uh, sorry, the first star has one planet that might be of interest. It has a liquid hydrosphere. Uh, temperature's a little bit low. Nitrogen oxygen atmosphere. Hmm. Okay. And the second one... Oh, wow. Okay. The second one is three planets here that are livable. One of which actually has, again, a liquid hydrosphere. Bit hot for us, but we can make it work. Um, the pressure's pretty high. We would need to increase the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. But other than that, bring down the temperature, increase the oxygen. This would be a livable planet. Or potentially is something that someone lives on already. Um, it's a kind of nice system. And that is over here, just two jumps away. Okay, we've just researched iron drive technology, which is great. This is the first real step with a level of like drive tech where I feel capable of being like, okay, we can roll this out properly. We can start building a lot more stuff. Up until this point, everything is kind of a bit like, eh, within a few years, it's going to be kind of obsolete. And also you don't get as much power. When we get the iron drive, that's where I'm like, okay, this is kind of like my minimum threshold for starting to explode our uh, production into space proper. So uh, we've also got the Dwangerman Marine Group, uh, which have completed their thing. Uh, yeah, they're 42,000. And that's the way. Uh, they're going to be probably going to be our cargo handlers in future. They're going to be building freighters, but that won't be for a little while because they need a lot more slipways. Um, so with the iron drive tech, we can now actually build ourselves uh, maybe another level of freighter. Which is what I have been waiting for. So, uh, we are going to pop open this. We're going to go a new ship class. This is going to be the Jagnath. We're going to go down to... Freighter. There we go. Simple enough. Uh, cargo hold, standard. Shuttle bay, yes. And we'll give you two... We don't need quite as many anymore. Uh, we will also want to then give you a new engine and fuel. So easy enough for engine. We're going to design attack. You're going to waddle all the way down to engine and drive. I'm going to crank it down in power. I'm going to crank the size up to max. And then we are going to check company name on there. Leon's Borealis. Borealis have really been uh, upping their game recently as a house. They've been involved in a lot of things, a lot of influential commanders as well. So, yes, we will then instant this. Close that up. And fresh tech. And then engines. However, we've still got like a whole bunch of nuclear pulse engines that we don't care about. So we're actually going to go and obsolete these, which will basically hide them. So we don't have to view a whole bunch of stuff. And we're going to place this on here. And we're going to go and get this up to kind of like I said, 42,000 tons tends to be the kind of range. I'll say that this is probably fine. It's a little bit slower, but it will save a 3,000 tons and engines are pretty expensive. The range, we're going to go for a bit more. 81 is not quite enough. This is probably the same freighter that we're going to start using when we actually stabilize jump points, send it to new systems. And of course, you know, places like Subject Delta is 5 billion, um, Agent 6.4. 
Uh, we don't want to be refueling all the time. I personally like having a, a 100 billion range. It is a little bit excessive. I am aware of that. We don't need to have a 100 billion range. But if you have like a weird binary or something, sometimes it's necessary. Um, fuel storage. We have a large at the moment. We could go for a very large, but that's just overkill. I'm going to say we grab um, another standard. Yeah. And this thing, what happens if we chuck the extra engine on? Just over 42,000. Um, you know what? I'm kind of tempted to. Let's look at the overall cost. Uh, does it say overall cost? I mean, the build time will drop, but it's probably worth being faster because we'll deliver our stuff faster. So what we also should do is a research into making bigger engines because currently we're making them as big as possible. We need five of them. If we make them even bigger, we can use less and they'll also be more efficient. So uh, deployment time three, etc. It's a commercial vessel, so that's fine. Let's just double check. There isn't like a tech coming up. I'm forgetting. Um, There is a new armor coming up. But that's going to be two years time. And I don't think we can really be bothered to wait that long. Um, new armor again. We're only wearing the minimum, which is one layer. So it will save a little bit of weight, but not much. If it was a military ship, then sure, that would make a difference because you've got many more layers. As is, not a problem. Yeah, I think we're good to load this. Um, we will go with a range of 100 billion. Uh, it might be excessive, but what the hell? Why not? 150 billion. Sure. Why not? I'm going to just say this is fine. We're going to lock it. Uh, we're also going to go to the future planet. And we're going to say, hey, I'm sorry about this, but you're now obsolete. Which will make it disappear, but we need to refresh the screen. Refresh tech probably doesn't do it. No. Um, closing and reopening will. There we go. So we now have the Jagannath class. And we're going to need to retool for that. So we're going to pop over here. Go to our shipyard. And although the Dragon Man will take over eventually, but now it's going to be the Terran International. So we're going to ask you to retool for the Jagnath. And you will take until 58 July. So pretty soon, actually. Now we can do the next level of whatever tech we want to do. Um, could make our engine bigger, but that's 8,000. That's a pretty big commitment. Um, I want to say capacitor recharge rate. That'll be useful for our lasers. Again, lasers aren't like our primary concern right now, but we do want them. So we'll put a little bit in for that. Still got eight left. That. Small jump point stabilization module. takes longer or we can give the large one which is half the time um it is half the research as well what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish mining production as soon as possible so if we dump all of the uh research labs over onto the mining production then that will only take a few months so then we can probably just focus on the small jump point stabilization module get that sorted yeah that seems like a good plan or we go for the big one but this is going to be quicker so i think we do the small one first uh, right carry on okay we've completed our retooling uh the continual capacity or day shipyard has reached its dark capacity that's beautiful Okay, so let's firstly go do the simple things first. Day! Do do do. We're at 10,000. We're going to add an extra. Wait. Secondly, um, the Jagnath has been retooled. At least we have retooled for it. I'm going to construct that. I'm going to chuck it into the cargo fleet. One, two, three, four, five. Right, next step. I believe our Sophie's at class have started to go a little bit too long. Um, 
Oh, there we go. The cesium got destroyed. Uh, yeah, the deployment time's excessive there. So we're going to remove all your orders and we're going to just auto route you back to Sol. Where you can do a complete overhaul. If you'll resupply, begin overhaul. And we'll get everyone to do that. And then we'll have to send them out again, but... Last thing we want is them running low on supplies, getting demoralized, taking longer, and then eventually one of the drives exploding. We're down to six out of our eight, thanks to the fossilites. I don't really want to push that. Uh, we could also maybe do like an update to the engines and stuff if we wanted, but engines are really expensive and it's often not worth retooling for them. So we'll probably pass on that one. Um, you know, we'll... Okay, we have done our research into mining production, but we also did the troop transport bay standard, which also unlocks large, very small, and small. Yeah, you know how to build a transport bay. You know how to build a few different types of transport bay. Uh, we are going to pop over to our research tab and start reassigning some research. Uh, firstly, construction production. We do want that small jump point stabilization module. We're going to dump like 12 research labs in, see what it says. Um, Nardo Borealis. Yeah, it'll be done early next year, which is nice. Oh, that was 15. Okay, well, let's just remove one now. And then ground forces. What do I want to do here? Drop bays, boarding bays. We probably want to start working on, like, ground forces in general. Just so that if we need them to defend, we have them to defend. So let's start thinking about, like, maybe... Um... Heavy vehicles? Yeah, why not? Okay, we've got our small jump point stabilization module. This is going to be incredibly useful. Uh, I think we're probably just going to want to roll this out immediately. So let's open the class design window. We should also probably reallocate that research. Uh, let's look at our C. E. Wealth generation, no. Sorum harvester, potentially. Shipyard operation, cost time savings. Yeah, yeah, useful, but maybe not right now. I'm tempted to go for the research rate buff, even though it is 20,000. Like, getting that would be a big difference, but I think we need the Sorum harvester. What that'll do is it will enable us to, instead of mining Sorum, it allows us to get it from gas giants. So we'll be able to basically harvest it from the gas of the giant, where it's all kind of like this gaseous state. So, set that up. We're going to maybe go for, like, eight people on this. It isn't as urgent. Um, we'll probably want to dump a couple onto the ship-to-ship -ship tractor beams. Um, we'll make the ground armor a bit faster. Beam fire control, likewise. Or anything else we want to work on? Hmm. Sure. Let's increase the ground speed. All right, new ship class. Uh, the Father Prax. This is going to be a jump point stabilization ship. I believe it's just called a stabilization ship in here. Stabilization ship. There we go. So, we need a small jump point stabilization. Small is relative. It's a 25,000 ton object. We'll chuck it on there. And then we're going to need to chuck on one of our best engines. The Leon's Borealis Commercial Iron Drive. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. This is going to need a lot more power and probably a lot more range. Like, these things are going to be going from Sol and then stabilizing jump points as far as we really want to push it. Like, certainly Subject Delta and Agent are places that we want to go. So, even if Agent's a little bit dangerous for now. Uh, we are going to be wanting to probably go for something in the region of, like, a very large... Like a 1 million fuel. That is a lot. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Barring getting destroyed. We can always get the fuel back by recycling. Worst case scenario. Apart from getting destroyed. In which case I guess we lose it. And that would suck. Maybe we don't go very large. Maybe we just go like too large. Yeah. For now this is okay. Um... Again, this is the slowest jump point stabilization module. It's 360 days. Um, I often find I don't need to go particularly fast with these, though. So for now, this is okay. This ship will probably suffice for a few decades. 
Um, speed, again, it's going to spend a year stabilizing a jump point. So, again, doesn't matter. It doesn't need a cargo shuttle bay or anything. Uh, it will just need, let's see, maybe another engine. Yeah, arguably. Where are we going to build this? Well, you're still upgrading your capacity. Could build it at Lycan Boat Builders, but that's a big shipyard. And I was hoping to use that for building tugs. Tugs have to be pretty big. So we'll maybe leave that for now. And I think we'll probably end up producing it at the Duncan Shipyard Limited. So no more colony ships for the near future, as uh, we will not be needing the Sapphire Ebony. It's the last tier of engine anyway. So if we were going to produce new ones, we'd probably update the drive. Yeah, this seems reasonable. Do we want to slow this down at all? Makes it a bit cheaper. Yeah, I'll say that's probably fine. We'll go with only the four drives. This is actually probably the smallest stabilization ship I've ever really built. I normally build them with the bigger um, stabilization module, but since research is a bit of a premium right now, this is probably the right call. Um, I don't think we need to change anything else. Again, we're not going to really give these individual names because they're just spending shipping. So... I think jobs are good. I don't think you need anything else. The only thing I'd maybe add to you would be a thermal sensor. On the basis of you're going to be sitting on a jump point a lot while you're trying to construct the stabilization field or whatever. If someone comes through, I kind of want to get some data. So, you know, worst case scenario, if someone comes through, we'll have a ping on their thermals. Um, it might be worth putting an active sensor on as well, but this would need to be a very specific size of active sensor. Um, I believe... 50 tons or less, and this is 40 tons, is acceptable. Okay. That's fine then. This is still commercial. Um, we could put an EM sensor on, but that seems pointless. Yeah, okay. We're going to lock this design. The Father Prax Stabilization Ship. Not small than I thought it would be. Right, oh. We will close that up. We're going to go over to the Duncan Shipyard. Free tool for the Father Prax. And this will interrupt the continual capacity expansion, but that's fine because it's continual, so it stopped where we interrupted it and it will continue later. If we were to stop someone who's, say, doing add 2,000 tons, you'd lose the 2,000 tons, which is frustrating. Okay, we've built five Jagnas. Um, we want to build more for sure. You know what? We could send these five Jagnaths. Like, if we were being optimal, I'd send these five Jagnaths off to do the thing. Um, and then I'd build more. But they build pretty quick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have them sit around in orbit. So I'm going to detach. Oops. I'm going to detach. Put them in there. I'm going to rename the fleet. I'm actually going to rename the fleet to times 10. I also got missile launcher reload. And we've finished production of tracking stations. Okay, so we've got to look at a few things. Research, industry, and mining. All right, we're going to go forward for five seconds. The reason for that is now... Building the Jagnath, we should be able to select... Fleet is a target. There we go. Great. Okay, we've got a load of stuff to do. Let's go look at mining. Yeah, we are now of Corundium, Gallocyte, Saurium, and Tritanium. Okay, luckily the stockpiles are still pretty high. We have that going for us. But it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit ropey. Now, bear in mind that Saurium is a mineral here. It will get converted into fuel, and we'll see down here. We have fuel reserves, annual production. Um, this is the production of fuel from mineral. One of the advantages of using fuel harvesters is that they process and refine it on board. Like, they'll take the saurium, they'll process it, and then they will put it into their giant fuel tank. So you can skip having to use fuel refineries, um, which is pretty much a no-brainer for me. I always do that. Um, we also have industry to do, 5%. We finished our deep space tracking stations. Uh, they're going to be useful. 
Where are we going to put this 5%? Probably on the ground force construction complex. It does take a while. Maybe automated mines. Yeah, automated mines. Let's up that. And then research. We finished our missile launcher reload rate. So we're going to want to do a new missile launcher thing. Uh, it's going to be the agility. We're going to up the agility of our missiles. And do we want six on this? Yeah, uh, the government did require us to work on Miltech. When do we get the new armor? 60. Can we speed that up so it's in this government cycle? Because they did require us to work on ships. And so far I've been trying to play catch up. Let's start adjusting things. Yes, we can get that into November. So we can actually start production of a ship. It won't be produced, but we can design it and we can start production of it. Right. Carry on. All right, with the production of the military academies, we're probably going to want to start focusing back on getting stuff ready to go outside our solar system. For instance, mass drivers. We're going to need those in other solar systems so we can shunt stuff around. I think what we'll do is we'll grab probably a good batch of like 30 we're going to be want to go to like several systems and plump them around so that will do for now and then when other stuff gets done we'll start focusing on a more and uh, automated mines um we already have a load of infrastructure being done so that's fine for now um we should be pretty good i'm probably will up the amount of research facilities since we're behind on that okay and we finally got our research into composite armor so uh since then We've been working on a few things. We've actually started uh, on researching. Where is it? Uh, max jump squadron size four. Basically, what that is is saying, hey, one jump drive can actually jump four ships of this size or lower. So you don't need every ship to have a jump drive. You just need one ship in a group of four. So military wise, that means that you don't need every ship to have a giant jump, jump drive attached. Like 40% of the ship be a jump drive. 40% of the engines. Where do the guns go? Um, so we're going to go to defensive systems and we will probably want to work on um laminated compass is a quite a way off shields take a while to research to a stage where they're actually useful so i'm going to say we probably want to start like a little bit on damage control and we only probably want to give like three to that uh terraform module is going to be done next year yeah I'll probably Pump the Sorum Harvester back up. Okay, so with composite ceramics, we now have a few options. Um, we're actually going to start building some tiny little defensive ships. These are going to be facts. Uh, fast attack craft that do not, very specifically, do not need a bridge, which is going to save us a good chunk of weight. Um, so we're going to have a new ship class. This is going to be the Fish Tea. We're going to get rid of the bridge. Uh, we're going to get rid of the large fuel storage. We might need to adjust that. But I want to get rid of the engineering space. We'll need a engineering space, but it doesn't need to be a full size one. And then we're also going to change the deployment time to... That's going to depend on the engine, actually. So we'll leave that for now. Um, right. We are going to go quickly to the miscellaneous and we are going to say, hey, uh, names for these ships. Well, the facts. And I actually don't want to use a name scheme for the facts. So we're just going to prefix them with... Oh, we don't even need a prefix if they've all got the same name. We can, uh, we can like, you know, identify them, like, just by looking at them. So, that should be fine, really. Yeah. Uh, okay. We need them to have active sensors. We need them to have um, missile launchers. We need them to have a missile designation system, uh, missile fire control, so it can pick targets. Uh, so, let's start off with designing some text. Obviously, the very first thing we'll start with is we'll go to our missiles, uh, missile launchers, missile launchers. There we go. Uh, we're actually up to reload rate three. Again, doesn't matter because we're going to be using box launchers. The whole point of these facts is they're going to be cheap. They're going to just rush towards wherever any enemy could be like attacking our system. They're going to fire off a whole load of missiles and then probably get killed. Or if they're lucky, return to base and do the same again. Effectively, they're just very large fighters. They go out, they do the mission, they come back. So, uh, the size of the missile we'll be using for this is going to be size 6. Now, that tends to be the standard size of missiles I use, but 
That's not as important these days. Um, I still think size 6 is a good one. We're going to whip up company name. The Liconia Devarin Advanced Defense Systems Company. Okay, pretty neat. Size 6 box launcher. Suits me fine. We're going to instant that. And then we're going to uh, refresh tech. Missile launcher. And then we're going to want, say, probably a minimum 8. Uh, each of these weighs 45 tons. Seems reasonable. That means that you're talking 90 tons times 4, so 360 tons. Yeah. Now, how fast do we want these specs? Now, here's the downside. Um, normally, if a ship is a beam ship, you want it to be very fast because you need to get it into beam range, which is pretty close range. If it's a missile, it doesn't need to be as fast because you just need to be able to get to a position where you can vaguely shoot the enemy. Missiles can have a much larger range. But because this is a, um, a fast response ship, it's designed to be like, crap, there's someone coming to the system after them. It needs to be somewhat fast. So we're going to start whipping out, and you might have guessed it. It is our old friend, Aurora Forex Missile and Ship Optimizer. We're going to go Ship Optimizer. We're going to say, hey, we just upped our tech to Ion Drives. Aren't you proud of us? The answer is, of course, no. Um, we're going to say, hey, I'd like, ideally, a military drive. The drive could be, I'm going to say, we could go up to 50% of the ship for this. Desired tonnage is 10. Desired range. Here's the thing. We already know that one of the entry points to Sol is going to be a pretty big trip there and back again. We would like to be able to, in future, once we stabilize the jump points, maybe have these go out a little further. So let's say, hey, what if we went for 40 billion? We can maybe adjust that later on. Um, one engine, normally I'd say multiple engines, but because it's a FAC, we don't need the same amount of, uh, what's it called? Like redundancy. So redundancy in Aurora is a thing. Um, if you have multiple different components, it's very hard to shut you down. Um, if you have multiple engines, you can keep moving. If one of them is shut down, just slower. If you have multiple fire controls, you can then link up all of your, you know, weapon systems to a different fire control and continue to fire. Um, if you've got multiple reactors, you can still charge your weapons, although slower. That sort of thing. The fact doesn't need redundancy because, and you might have guessed this, the redundancy is having other facts. They are cheap, they are small, and they are probably going to die if someone shoots at them. But there are going to be a lot of them because they are going to be cheap to produce. The idea is that these are kind of the... Um, I throw a lot of tiny glass cannons at you. Approach. Ideally, they never fight. I don't want these to ever fight. If they fight, we've got a problem. Uh, so minimum number of engines is just going to be one. And... We want desired speed to... Let's see if we can get to 5,000. Really? No? Okay, what if we went to half that range? It can be done at half the range. And now we're seeing engines with uh, 1.25, 1.2, 1.1, 1.15, 1 kind of. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, what if we up the range a little bit more? No solution. Okay, well, let's drop our speed a bit. And then... Yeah. They aren't going to have jump drives, obviously. Uh, that would eat up a lot of the space. And on a fact, it's not really worth it. Max engine size. I don't think there's anything that's incorrect there. Okay, how low do we have to go on this one? Pretty low. Okay, what if we just went for 35 billion kilometers? Okay. We're starting to see that return. We're getting up to 4,000 speed. Um, can we get a little bit higher? 4,500? No. We could make the engine bigger. Again, by making the engine bigger, we're going to be losing out on weapon space. And also sensor space. Um, you know, missile firing control space. Potentially armor, but as I've mentioned, I'm not going to really worry too much about armor on these ships. I might say give them, you know three layers of armor or something. Let's actually factor this in. We can go up here and we can add three layers of armor. Uh, armor? Armor. That is going to take an extra, what was that, like an extra 100 tons? Oof. 100 tons on a ship like this is pretty, pretty 
iffy. Yeah, um, I think we just have to say, hey, that's two missile launchers. Fact, you're going to die if you get hit. I'd like to go faster. Okay, what if we reduce the range again? You need to be able to respond to threats. If you can't get to the threat, it doesn't matter. Oh, very limited set of results here. Okay, so a 7.6 hull size engine at uh, just under one times would get us that speed. And we would just need to chuck in two standard fuel tanks. Two standard fuel tanks on a ship this small is a lot, actually. Yeah, okay, um, let's do this then. Design tech. Engine, iron drive, engine power, ramp it down. And then... We're going down to a... What was it? 7.6. And then company name. Kruber Aircraft Engine Company. Okay. Okay. I've definitely overed the fuel storage deliberately here. We need a missile fire control. We need an active search sensor. Now, here's where we're going to start doing uh, a few tricky things. We're going to probably want a search sensor that can find enemies once they enter our system. Like, we'll need to be able to look for them. And that's going to need to be a pretty large search sensor, all things considered. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a variant of the fish tea, which is going to be the um, command and control leader craft. And there's going to be one of those to every, like, nine fish teas or whatever, or ten fish teas. The idea being that that one will then be able to find the enemy and it will have a few less missile launchers to make space for that, but it should work. So we're going to design tech and we're going to go and pop over to our fire control and we're going to design a fire control. Uh, we're going to say resolution 5,000 tons. Um, seems reasonable to me. We want to fire at a range of 70 million, ideally. That's not really going to be feasible, though. 150 tons sensor. Yeah. Okay, what if we make it um, larger resolution you're looking for? Okay, we can get it down to, like, 90 tons. Again, we're going to need to make some real adjustments here. That isn't really good enough, unfortunately. Like, we might be able to, you know, shave off a fuel storage, but we still need to put an engineering in. We need to still up the deployment time. Like, we're needing to make some quite considerable adjustments. Um, downside of only using the iron drive this early. Yeah, we'd have to drop our speed by a third. And if we can't respond in time or we can't find them once they get in system, this is all for nothing. So I think we just accept that we're going to maybe have to drop, say, like two missile launchers or something, worst case scenario. Uh, what we will do is we'll say, hey, why don't we just start hunting people a much closer range? Like, let's make the range for our missiles here 40 million kilometers. Sure. Uh, we're going to add a company name on here. The Kruber von Krajo. Kruber very much involved the actual manufacturer of the fish tea. Um, missile fire control. I like to change the name here. So I'm going to call it the MFC. Um, it is going to be the 41 because it rounds up. Uh, 41 million kilometers for a target resolution of 7,000 tons. So 7K. And this is a mass of 40 tons. Okay. And that way it's kind of got the pertinent information like right in there. If the enemy comes through as 1,000 tons, we're going to need to close much further to be able to detect them though. That's kind of the job. Okay, we're going to instant that. I'm uh, going to pop over here. Refresh our tech. Missile fire control. Add that. You notice that we're getting really close to our limit here. I'm going to pull down one of those fuel storages for now. Right, let's find ourselves an active search sensor. Uh, search sensor. We would like to search for, and we're going to match this up, 7,000 tons. It doesn't need to be huge. We're going to rely on our leaders for this, but it does need to be able to match our missile fire control. Ugh. Okay. It doesn't need to match our missile fire control. Here's a technicality. You need someone in your fleet with a search sensor that can detect the enemy to be able to fire on them. It doesn't need to be your ship. 
you need to have a missile fire control on your ship that can detect the enemy. But you don't necessarily need a search sensor. So we can rely on our command and control ships for this. We could, in theory, just give them nothing. But I still think it worthwhile giving them a sensor. Um, what were you designed for? Size, you're 40 tons. Um, your range is 18 million. Um, I don't even think we add a 40 ton sensor to this. I think we probably even maybe just say sod it. We could give you like a one. Like it's it's five tons. It's probably worth adding it for five tons. Yeah. And we're going to call you the um, active search sensor or ass. And then going to be... Um, Was it 7 million or 7k? And you are literally like mass 5 tons. Okay. Fresh attack. Now, it will take you... Um, or We're going to add more fuel to this. How much fuel are we going to go for? It was going to say one standard, three... Oh, we've changed this now. Uh, I think it was another small or something. Okay, so we're looking at um, almost 90 days, so three months. We've got deployment time of three months hooked in here. So that seems fine. We now need to make sure that it has the engineering to survive for that long. And its life is zero years currently. So let's put um, a tiny maintenance storage in or a small. Small. Then engineering. Small. Oh god, the maintenance life is actually like 10 years. We do not need that. Okay, let's let's roll this back a little bit. What if we put like a tiny maintenance storage bay in? Okay, we just shot over a thousand tons and it's saying we have no bridge, which it'll add a bridge automatically in a second. Uh, oh, it's because I didn't get rid of the small. There we go. Um, and then maintenance. Did I get rid of maintenance? I think I got rid of maintenance instead. Uh, let's add a fighter maintenance storage. Yeah, we don't even need that. That's like 3.5. Okay. What if we changed our engineering to a fighter engineering? I mean, technically we might not even need the engineering space, right? What if we give you armor? Oh, a thousand and two tons. So close. We're going to roll that back to one. And then it's added the bridge, which we have to get rid of. Um, we're so close to also being able to add another missile launcher in here. We've got our active search sensor. We've got our missile fire control. We've got a maintenance storage. You know what? We can add fuel. We'll just increase the range a little bit. So what if we were to rip off that full tank and then just add a normal one? It does go over. Oh, that was an engineering space. Whoops. Um, there we go. Ooh, it, it does stay under. Okay. And we get more range. Um, that is going to be about four months. Can we get four months out of this? We can. Okay, neat. It has eight missile launchers. It has a search sensor. It has a missile fire control. It has the fuel to be able to go 44 billion kilometers. So, you know, 22 and then back again. Because, you know, I don't want to just get it stranded in space. Um, and it will have a maintenance life that should survive that long. Okay. This should be okay. So, we're going to lock the design. But we're also then going to copy the class. Oh, 
I'm going to change the designation. You are going to be a fac. Um, fast attack crap. There we go. And then we're going to copy. Uh, we're going to rename you to the Fishti. Um, command. And we're going to then change your designation to Fac Leader. And we're going to start thinking about, right, how do we do this with the actual, like, sensors? Well, the missile launches are 45 tons each. So for our new sensor, which we want to really have as big a range as possible, We have eight of them, 45 tons each, um, three, well, three, 60, we're talking 360 tons. Well, this one's going to be 350 tons and it only just has a resolution that can actually see 60 million. So it's not the most fantastic search sensor in the world. Uh, we really could do a new search sensor attack, I'm just saying, but it should do for now. And then we if we install this, you know, it's going to eat up the entire space. We could get rid of the missile fire control. We get rid of the search sensor, etc. Missile fire control, how much do you weigh? 40 tons. Yeah, okay. Um, we might be able to up this a little bit. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to a search sensor size of 8. I kind of want to drop the resolution a little bit. Look for 5,000 ton vessels, maybe. Just because if they are small, we'll have a hard time finding them. Okay, and we're going to... Kuba von Cryo also going to make this. And then this is going to be the ass. Um, and I'll put R in front just for range. I really normally do that. I forgot to before. 70, uh, 50... 7 um, million, and then it's looking for a 5 ton vessel, so 5k, and this is a 400 ton object. So instant that. Fresh tech, and I'm going to just rip out all the missile launches. And then because I've done that, we don't need the missile fire control. We also don't need the active search sensor. Um, bang. And you'll notice that, hey, this is 18 tons over. This ship has no bridge. Yep, that's the downside. Uh, we will probably need to just make an adjustment here. 18 tons is a lot to try and shave. It's about 10% of the range, though. Um, again, I don't really want to adjust fuel or anything, because then we'll start having a ship that will run out of fuel before the rest of the ships, and they'll still have to turn back. It'll hold everyone back, really. Uh, we're going to say go down to the next sensor size, and this is going to be the ass R54 M, and uh, it's looking for 5K. Uh, and then it's M350 tons. We'll instant that. We'll get rid of our current. And then we'll also obsolete that. Uh, the prototype system is what's designed for this, but then you're meant to then research. So I'm just going to instant it. It's a bit quicker. Uh, and then we're going to have this plopped in. And then you'll find, hey, we've got a little bit of space left. Now, this probably isn't enough space to say, give it armor as a command vessel. I would love if that was an option. Uh, it's also now added the bridge. Go, shoot. Um, what can we do with the extra space? Ah, uh, I really don't know. Uh, the maintenance life has dropped considerably because it's actually more intricate as a system to deal with. So I think what we will do is we'll add something to deal with that. So we'll add an engineering space and it will be a... Um, we'll probably go for a small, but we'll just accept a tiny. Yeah, that's, that's actually over the top. We won't even add a tiny. We're going to add just a fighter engineering space. And that is still under tonnage and that's actually fine. Because that means it might get targeted less. I mean, that's my hope. So, I'm going to lock the design. I'm going to close this up. 
Hop over here. Shipyard and Pistota. I would like you to retool for the Fishti. Ah, uh, but you're adding a slipway right now. Uh, yeah, we'll wait until the slipway's done. Okay, we've just built more Jagnas, which means... Da -da -da -da, we have a load. Okay, um, we're going to go and just focus on the incredible amounts of infrastructure we need to move. We've actually got almost 12,000 ready at Earth. Um, there's so much in the way of population that we can deal with here. I'm going to say just drop off the installations and come back for more. Um, story supply. And look at that. We've cut the, the travel time down significantly. That's really helpful. Now, I've just told them to do this 50 times um, once for each of the four moons that we have. It's going to take them, you know, north of 10 years. Again, we can always cancel this halfway through, but we are going to also start producing more Jagnaths. Like, I want two fleets of 10, and then maybe we start getting some of the older fleets and getting rid of them and, you know, scrapping them for components or whatever. But we want to construct um, fleet, uh, cargo fleet, Jagnaths. Okay, the Pistota company is now ready to start producing fish teas. Sadly, the fish tea isn't similar enough to the fish tea leader that you can produce both of them in the same shipyard. So we're going to need to produce a bunch of fish teas, and then we're going to need to switch to retool to the leader and then do the same. Luckily for Fax, it's going to be pretty quick because they're small shipyards. So we're going to construct fish teas. We're also going to keep retooling, not retooling, uh, adding slipways, that's the one. And Battlefleet, fish tea. Sure. Now we're also going to need to design them missiles. That will actually be useful um, for them. The other missiles we have at the moment, the mines are huge and also they're not particularly great. They're not designed to be used at range. They're designed to be short range. Um, oh crap, someone's in my system. But we also have new tech, so hopefully we can make something a little bit more effective. However, for now, we're going to call it here for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Um, it's interesting. We have ourselves uh, a fair few systems that we know about. We do need to continue our exploration and hopefully mineral search. But with the you know beginning of the production of the Father Prax, we've got three being produced right now. Uh, we can actually go stabilize some systems and actually start looking outside of Sol or somewhere to set up. And it's probably only Subject Delta. There's a very nice planet there that we're interested in. I also need to have a fix of this, but uh, maybe after we have a look at what's in Davit. Either way, it is election time, and uh, that means that there will be an election, and we'll find out who's going to win that at the beginning of the next episode. I've been Enter Elysium. Like, subscribe. Stay shiny.